Good evening, Floss Tube. My name is Mandy. Welcome to my channel, All About Cross Stitch. Today is Friday, September 13th. Friday the 13th, 2024. Um, welcome to my channel about cross stitch. I'm probably gonna be a fairly quick video. I don't have a whole lot to show. I have no haul. Um, yeah, there's probably, I mean, to be fair, there probably shouldn't have been a whole lot of haul to begin with over the last bit of time. Um, I, I enjoy shopping though. I got notification this week that my, and there's stitches, black cat. If you are new here, welcome. We have a black cat. Her name is Stitches. It's me. She's a fun one to have around. Um, yeah, so I got notification this week that my um, lease for my apartment is, you know, coming up due, ready for renewal and all that. It's going up. Everything is, except wages, of course. Wages are not raising with the rate of increase that everything else is going up. It's just kind of hitting hard that this is the largest jump in my rent that I've had in the 11 years that I have lived here, so a bit of a struggle because of that. There's going to be some things changing in regards to, you know, it may be time to cut that cord cable. Got to have internet because I work from home. Got to have my internet. Um, I imagine the things that I, I really don't use my cable to the extent that I'm paying for, so I'm sure I can find the stuff that I do watch online somewhere, you know, some streaming service or something, so that may take a cut, you know, all that good stuff, so. Um, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks since I filmed, got a couple of new starts, got some projects that I've worked on. Um, this week, like, Today's Friday, of course, so, you know, the week that work week that I just ended, it was a week. Oh my goodness. I didn't work any extra overtime or anything like I did a few weeks ago, I guess. Scheduled to next week, but I just worked my normal uh, shift this week and it was busy. Oh my goodness. I, there were days that I stepped away from my desk, you know, at the end of the day and just like, huge sigh of, oh my gosh, I'm done. I know there was one day that I looked at my emails. I was over 30 outbound emails. So just the work that's coming in and constant phone calls and emails and it's been a lot. So definitely looking forward to decompressing this weekend a little bit. I uh, got definitely stitching plans, got a crafty day planned for Sunday. So looking forward to not sitting at the desk. Um, the week beforehand, I was off for the week. So I took the week off from work, didn't go anywhere, didn't, um, you know, no plans. I just, I've got lots of vacation time that I gotta use. And you know, it, it, we don't want it to turn into a use it or lose it kind of a thing. So took the week off. Um, it was, Monday was Labor Day. And then, you know, had the remaining four days plus two weekends. So overall it was nine days straight that I had off work and it was glorious and I loved it. I <laughs> very much appreciated it. I spent a lot of time out at my sister's house. Um, there were days that just, um, she didn't have a whole lot going on. So it was just kind of a hanging out, um, crafting. I stitched a lot of the time or, you know, some of the times there was one day that I was working on a little diamond paintings uh, kit. And so, um, yeah, just hanging out out there. There was one day that I met mom, sister, dad at um, Michael's. My mom is taking a cross stitch piece to get framed. So that is going to be really cool to see. I cannot wait for that. So we got that um, framing picked out and everything and then went to lunch back out to my sister's house again, more crafting. Um, so yeah, it was just some really relaxing, refreshing time, absolutely um, needed and um, looking forward to taking some more days off. <laughs> I know I have more vacation time, so. Um, it, I think in my last couple of videos, I've talked about kind of gathering my kits together of stuff that I have like partially kitted, mostly kitted, like ready to go. So I've been doing a little bit of starting 
And this first particular piece that I'm gonna share, um, we're gonna just dive into it. I really don't have a whole lot of stuff on. First piece that I'm gonna share, sorry for the crinkles, I should have taken it out of the package. Um, I found it in my stash. Have absolutely no clue where it came from. I don't remember if it was something that I had added to a wish list that like my mom, you know, buying for my wish list. It could be something that my mom came across and bought for me, figuring, hey, you might like this. I honestly have no clue where this thing came from. I feel like I've got a couple of other charts from this designer in my um, stash already, so it's entirely possible that I guess either of those scenarios. There was one day, again, while I was off work, that I was going through stuff. I was thinking maybe I'll go to a local needle workshop um, where they've got a huge selection of flosses that I was thinking, you know, get some over dyed flosses for a couple different projects. Wasn't really coming across anything that needed to be kitted up or anything like that. To, um, DMC for pretty much everything but I came across this chart and so then it turned into okay let's get all the charts together that I want to get um, working copies made and you know work on some of that so I made a run to the print shop to get some working copies um, but yeah definitely uh, shop your stash because you may absolutely find stuff that you don't remember having The way stitches just took off running, it was funny. So this is Whispered by the Wind, um, is the design company name. Astronomer's Gate um, by Mary McDonald, Marie McDonald. But this is called Astronomer's Gate. And it's just, it's really cool. And I so do not remember having this in my stash. So of course we got, you know, a couple black cats here, really cool you know, crows and all that, the intricacy of, that's all um, backstitching, really. So just really cool. And so on the back of it is a few that I had to go ahead and already add something to a wish list so I don't forget about it. Um, we've got Witch's Gate and Wizard's Gate. Of course, we've got dragons. So a couple dragons on the gate. Gargoyle. That's not a gargoyle. What would that be? Dragons, Mandy. Those are most likely dragons. Did I say that it's been a week? So that one's really cool. So then we've got that in the witch's gate. And then, so I've added, I think, wizard's gate and then this morning tree. Love a good tree. And then we've got beneath the harvest moon. So we've got a scarecrow. That's pretty cool, but really it's the wizard's gate and um, the morning tree that are really on my, ooh, I wanna stitch those. So yeah, Astronomer's Gate, whispered by the, wh whispered by the wind. Don't remember where I came from. This is stitched on a piece of something from Bestitch Me. Ooh, I think this is gray magic. I think this was one of the pieces of material that I bought from Carolyn. Cezuck. So, very small start. Just got the moon and the first two crows. Um, in fact, today on my lunch break, I just worked on adding the crows. So we've got the moon. Um, it's the, um, on a full piece. I haven't just haven't cut it down. For the um, way I started it, it you know, the pieces that come from fabric of the month, what are they? 18 by 27 or something like that. It was wide enough to go at the narrowest direction. So we've got lots to add to it. Um, so it's not gonna be a giant piece by any means, but definitely gonna be a lot of work with the uh, gate. And then we've got the pillars, so. That'll be fun to work on at some point. No, I may actually pull it back out today being the 13th. It is common to do dark October stitching. Did we need a full coverage piece? No. Did we want to start another full coverage piece? Yeah. 
I've had this pattern in my stash for a year now. Um, this is from Stitches So Beautiful. It is um, Birdhouse. Artwork is by Rare Rosemary Berlin. Thankfully it's in the caption. <laughs> so like I said, I've had this uh, chart. I bought it a long, about a year ago. Mm, that was a book. <laughs> um, we are just in that very upper corner working on a leaf. I haven't even gotten into any of the blue. Figure out which direction it goes up. We've got a bit of a leaf. 16 count white ada, two strands, full dress. That's how I do all of my full coverage for the time being anyways. I'm thinking I want to start something on an 18 count at some point, but that's going to mean purchasing 18 count. So for now, we've got 18 count. No. I just said we've got 16 count. My goodness, is this video going to be fun if I keep talking? <laughs> Miss talking. Goodness, what a day it's been. So that is another full coverage um, start added to my circulation. Um, I don't work on any kind of like set rotations was the word I was looking for. I just, whenever I feel like working on it. Uh, the next piece that, this is one of the pieces I was working at my sister's house again. Um, you've seen this quite a bit lately. I feel like I've been pulling it out pretty often. Emma Congdon's cross stitch for the soul. And when I make note of it in my calendar or whatever, of what I've stitched on, I just note it as when it rains. So it's called, or it says when it and, um, none of these pieces in the book really have any sort of like titles to them. So when it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. I've had this piece on the go for a couple of years now. I love it. I am ready for it to, I'm about ready for it to be done though. Um, I'm only about halfway though. I definitely have a lot, of, long, long way to go. This is stitched on a piece of 16 count Ozark from Color and Cotton. So since you would have seen it last, I started adding in some more of the colors in the rainbow and got the word rainbow just about all done. There will be an S there as well. I did have to make a change, um, most likely because of the material that I'm stitching it on. Uh, it called for this super pale um, purple like 211 DMC color um, that is it wasn't showing up on my material and so I figured why get the whole thing stitched just to not be able to see it so I went ahead and changed it this is another purple that is part of the called for flosses um, I don't remember the number off the top of my head at the moment but it's just one of the other purples that are from the piece that I figured I'd switch it out to so that you can be able to read it. So. That is my when it rains piece. I don't stitch on it when it rains or anything. I don't mean by that. It just when it rains, look for rainbows. Alrighty. So this next piece, I'll show from the cover pattern from the photo because I do actually have a cover piece now. This has been a stitch along that I've been stitching since, I want to say it was, I, I'm pretty sure the first piece came out Memorial Weekend, so like Memorial Day, and the last piece came out this week. This is the Ever After Stitch Along, hosted by Forbidden Fiber Co. And um, I'm using all of the Forbidden Fiber Co. over dyed flosses, and then the uh, fabric I got from them as well. So since you saw it last, I got... I finished out the bird, what does that say? A bird may love a fish, senor, but where would they live? And then I got the one with the food, that one's so funny. Um, of course not, mother, I'm only here for the food. And it is a plate of food. And then we got the big piece, this last piece is not done yet, stitched wise. Um, there's a lot to it. So it's a um, so it is a quote from near the end of the movie that says, "You, sir, are supposed to be charming, and we, princess, are supposed to live happily ever after." Says who? You know, I don't know. 
the conversation between the prince and Danielle. And so um, we've got the castle. Of course, it's a story based off of Cinderella shoes. So we've got the shoes. Um, there was a tree added to it, apple tree. Um, Leanne gave an explanation of kind of how she came up with the elements to add to this. So she mentioned adding the um, apple tree from the orchard. That is kind of an ode to how they first met. Um, it was one of the first pieces that I stitched from when Danielle threw apples at the prince. Um, we've got the um, Cinderella's castle. Not so much based off of the movie, but she said that she was um, piecing it from Magic Castle from that place, you know, happiest place on earth. Um, modeling it off of the, you know, iconic Cinderella um, castle. So then, like I said, she got the shoes in there. And I think that's pretty much about it. And then the words. So that one is definitely gonna take me a little while to stitch um, because I haven't even gotten the frames done yet. So obviously it's still on the Q snap. So kind of come in a little bit from the pieces what you would have seen. Of course, not mother, I'm only here for the food. Um, that was not the evil stepsister, but the nice stepsister's comment. I chuckled when I read that being added. And um, this one was a lot of stitching as well because with the fish all the way across, but that was a fun one to stitch. And then I still have to meet up the inner border, I got the outer one all done, and then meet that up, it's almost there, and then I can start working on the rest of that. This has been a fun one. Uh, this is stitched on a piece of 18 count Fiberano, Forbidden Fiber Co. That's who it's, the whole piece is by. Um, in the colorway Ever After, it is modeled to look a lot like the um, DVD box. this next piece. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen all of this stuff because I'm pretty sure I've put everything out there. But I enjoy showing. We got a page finish on a full coverage piece. I was, um, I made it a mission that uh, at the beginning of my little vacation time, I wanted to have the page finished. I got it done Sunday or Monday out of the like holiday weekend. So I I, I went ham on this piece and got that thing done. So this is Mini Midnight Messenger. Artwork is by Ann Stokes, uh, chartered by Heaven and Earth. Another 16 count. And we are officially past the 50% mark. 50.47% I think is what it's at. Uh, I finished page six. So the fun part about it is I'm pretty sure I technically have, well, I was going to misspeak, probably be easier to look at my tablet. I've got one, two, three, I've technically got four full coverage pages, like the full Heaven and Earth pages, and then the rest are going to be partials until it's done. I am loving the detail. just do it this way. Look at the detail. Oh my goodness. You can just see the detail in that hood. You can see all of the, um, like the folds and you can see detail back into, you know, back behind the trees behind her. It is just, this piece just, every time I look at it through the camera, the detail out of it just amazes me so much. I would love to make this my focus on a finish for 2025. Can't believe we're already talking about 2025. But I have another piece and this is actually going to take me into my next whip that I think I'm going to make this my focus piece first. 
I don't see me doing both um because there's a lot to be done on this piece yet this one's only at 27 percent and some change so this is mini c opal artwork is by elizabeth welker again charted by hayden um i'm stitching this for my mom and so because i've already been stitching on this for a few years it, it's time to get this thing focused and try to get it done so that she can have it and have a chance to get it framed and um, on her wall and so she can enjoy it so I yeah we need to get going on this she knows that it's not a main focus piece you know since I started it kind of thing when I told her I'm like this is not gonna be a focus once it gets going and I'm far enough along at one point I will be but you know we've got other projects that I want to work on but now it's kind of getting to the point where yeah I think it might be time to make it a focus piece so again I'm only at 27 percent if I can keep working through this year though and like maybe get if I remember right I think this is yeah this is two, technically two pages so it's a partial and then so it's one full and then a partial that's just a few stitches wide so I'm stitching them together this is technically the far right side um, I don't have the corner in yet because I don't have a couple other stitches in, um, but technically that is the right side of the um, page. And yeah, this one is, and like I said, I know it's at 27%. I forgot what page number I'm working on though. One, two, three. So I'm technically working on pages four and five. There's going to then be two rows of the full um, standard heaven and earth pages. And then let's see, a total of one, two, three. Then a total of eight partial pages. So, yeah, we got a ways to go. 27.18% complete. Um, yeah. That's gonna be my focus piece. I'm definitely working towards a page finish, a couple page finishes, I guess. Um, there was one night this past week while some entertaining TV was on that I got over 400 stitches in one evening. I just, I picked one color. There's a lot of like, one color here and I just, I just started adding length after length after length. And um, yeah, we got a lot done, so. Definitely enjoying working on this. Those colors, I love the colors. No wonder why. Um, these are my mom's favorite colors. So she's not into the bash. Um, what is the thing? Um, favorite colors are blush and bashful. Hers are blue and turquoise and teal and whatever all those kind of shades are. So these colors are absolutely up her alley. And so I definitely would like to see it as a finish for her. Um, at one point, since I've been working on it. I did the math to get it um, of what I would have to get it done next year. Um, I think like for 12 months, I would have to stitch 6,000 stitches a month, which honestly, that's nothing. Um, when I was, so if you've been with me for a while, this year I focused on a piece called Dark Goddess. And last year I did the same things, uh, focusing on a piece called um, Stitching Moon. That was an Amy Stewart piece. Dark Goddess was the late Carol Cavallaris. It was easy for me to get 14,000 stitches on a piece in a month. I get on a mission to get a, a project done. Like these the last couple of years, I can't put the thing down. So, you know, 10 to 12 to 14,000 stitches in a month that's going to be not much to um, see it for, uh, you know, as a finish next year. So it, it'll be doable. The whole piece has 100,000 stitches in it. So it's going to be a lot of stitching. But if I were to do a mission of just how much it would take to get me done through the 12 months, it would only be 6,000 stitches a month. So no hard and fast goals or anything of that nature. Because like this year when I picked up Dark Goddess, I was at... I don't know, 49%. I had that piece done mid-May. So to have, you know, 40, 50,000 some stitches left to do. Yeah, because that piece had a total of 80 some thousand stitches. So yeah, say around 40,000 stitches. 
getting it done in May, that that was nothing um, because I got obsessed with that piece. I couldn't put the thing down. I barely worked on anything else. So to say that I could have that piece finished in December by only doing 6,000 stitches a month, you know, that would be easy for me to even make up a lot of extra time, you know, say by September or, you know, I don't want to put any set, you know, want to have it done by a certain thing. It'd be awesome if I could, you know, if it does take me the year, I could get it done and get it finished stitching and like give it back to her for Christmas. <laughs> so. Um, that's about all that I have to share in terms of like anything that I've stitched on. Like I said, I don't have any haul. Um, part of the things that I was doing in terms of um, stitching, like kitting things together, um, more so the day that I was taking stuff to get working copies made. I ended up pulling this book out. It is the Cross Stitch for the Earth. Again, another Emma Congdon book. And a, ca a couple camera um, cross that I'm like, oh, I really like those. So easy to pull flosses for. And um, <laughs> um, I know, yeah, I think I got the flosses pulled for this. Still need to pull a fabric, um, but love the earth. I just loved all the animals. I thought those were really fun. So I'm going to have this one ready to go. And then the other one, if you watch Laura Stitching by the Shore, you have seen this one. I think it was a start sometime earlier this year. Again, I don't have any fabric pulled for this one yet, but um, never underestimate the difference you make. I love this piece. I love it every time she shows it. I need to figure out what color fabric she stitched hers on. I don't necessarily want to copy or anything like that. It just, I'm curious to know what color her fabric is on. So I need to go do some looking. Um, it was the pinks and the purples that you're not gonna be able to see. Like, I don't know. Cause this is printed in color. And so pretty close to DMC color shades that really drew my eye. It's like, yeah, I want to get that one started. So, um, haven't started it yet, but it's in my stash. So love these books. There's some really great pieces in those. I haven't started anything out of that book yet though. So haven't decided if I want to get, um, when it rains moving a little further closer to a finish, or I just may randomly decide to start it one of these days. You'll have to come back and watch to see if I have. Um, that's really about all that I have to share. Not a whole else going on. Um, I did finish a book last night. I think I talked about the first one. This is book three in the series. The Housemaid is Watching by Frida McFadden. Oh my gosh. Good. Definitely not as good as the first one. The first one absolutely just pulled me right in. And this one did too, but in terms of kind of favorites out of them. Housemaid itself, just the first book, How The Housemaid, was so good that um, that was my introduction to the author. And then I read the second one. What is that one called? I know it's Housemaid something. Housemaid Secret. Yes. That one was really good too. And then the housemaid is watching. A little different in terms of what happened, I think, but the twist at the end, well worth it. Um, pretty quick read for me. So that was a good one. That's about really all that I've read recently. Haven't read a whole lot. I've got another um, Throne of Glass book sitting right here, but I haven't read too much out of that one yet. I don't even remember. Queen of Shadows? Yes. Queen of Shadows. So, that's about it. Plans are to stitch. That is my plans. I know so many people are already starting to talk about plans that they want to do for 2025 and all of that kind of stuff. And honestly, I, I, as soon as I think of I want to make a plan, you know, like a couple years ago, I started WhipGo. 
if I made it three months in, that would have that that was pushing it. I just I get to the point where it's like, yeah, I'll just do my own thing. So there's a um, acronym out there, SWEWE, stitch what you want when you want. That is definitely fitting for me. I I I like to stitch on what pulls me in. I have been enjoying uh, Laura Stitching by the Shores Facebook group um, and also on her community tab. She's got an I Spy challenge, so that's been fun to think of, you know, what can I work on to kind of fit some of those challenges. So I do um, enjoy working on those in terms of, you know, what can I stitch to add, you know, for that. It's just a good way of getting progress. So. I'm in a couple of other Facebook groups, but nothing real hardcore pushing to get done. I've just been really stitching on, enjoying stitching on whatever calls to me. And that's really how I do it. So, well, we're going to go. We're going to see if we can get this video uploaded, which I hope it doesn't take all that long because I want to go watch Floss Tube. And I use my phone to watch Floss Tube. So, all right. So, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're getting lots of stitching in. Um, Share with me what you're stitching on, stitching on if you'd like. And remember, go stitch your stash or go shop your stash. You might find something that you didn't remember having. So keep stitching, stitch what brings you joy, and we'll see you again soon.